All right, well, good morning, everyone. Um, I, uh, we're in the middle of this journey of faith, uh, and, and part of the things that I want to point out are some of the things that are coming up uh, in the highlights here. And isn't it crazy that this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday? Wow, it's coming up. Coming up, Ash Wednesday. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's uh, throughout the ages, Christians have celebrated this uh, with, with a very simple sign. They would take ashes and make the sign of the cross on their forehead. If you're interested on why they do that or why they've done that, uh, by all means, Google it. It's, uh, it'll start you at least in, in, in the right direction. But one thing that we we talked about here at Agape is that we would uh, consider with our small groups, uh, we would consider having this kind of a rhythm of doing prayer walks and fellowship and then discussion and then acts of kindness and go back to discussion. And what I really want to do this morning is I want to cover this topic of prayer walks. What in the world are prayer walks? So, so these are going to be some of the uh, simple things uh, that we can do during prayer walks. But I want to I want to start us off with why do we do it? Why do we do prayer walks? Uh, and then I'll talk about um, a little bit how how what's really happening when we do prayer walks, and then just the simple logistics of prayer walks. Well, what are prayer walks? Well, prayer walks is the concept of you're walking around in your community, and as you're walking around, you pray. You pray. As opposed to having to be in, in a church building or somewhere, and you're all sitting in pews, you know, hands crossed, angels singing in the background, oh, and everybody prays. And no, this is a little bit more kinetic. This is a little bit more engaging. You actually, you actually going around. No, you don't have to close your eyes when you do prayer walks because if you do, you could stumble and fall, and that's not a good thing. So you're actually praying with your eyes open and going around and praying. So here's here's the, the question: Why do we do it? Why do we do it? Well, I want to I want to suggest there's at least three reasons why we do it. Uh, prayer is foundational to the Christian life. Jesus himself said, uh, let me teach you, or actually the, the disciples said, uh, teacher, how do we pray? And he taught them to pray. So Jesus himself prayed and taught his disciples to pray. And it's foundational, it's part of who we are. Uh, the other thing is, prayer is a necessary part of our mission. See, the, the scripture tells us that we don't fight against flesh and blood, but we fight against powers and principalities and forces. So um, the, the nature of what our mission is, our mission is as simple as a candle being the one candle in a dark, dark room. Our mission is to be the light and engage the darkness so that the darkness is pushed back and the darkness is no longer in a spot but light is. That's our mission. Our mission is to bring light. Our mission is to be above board, above the line. We've talked about that. And, and the whole idea is, is that we need to engage in that above board, above the line lifestyle. Why? Well, because our King, Jesus Christ himself, came in the dark place and said, you will no longer be captives in the dark spot. I have come as a SWAT team to rescue, to grab out of the dark. So he is the ultimate rescuer. He comes and engages in the darkest places, in the darkest moments. You'll find that there's always a sliver of light. And I don't care how dark things get. And I don't, I don't care how dark the darkness is. 
and I don't care how horrible the night is, if you really look, you'll find at least one light. It might be far away, it might be faint, but you will see it. The scripture promises that. And perhaps in those moments when, almost like in a cave, right? You go into a cave and, and the tour guide turns off all the lights and it's pitch black and you put your hand right here, you can't see a thing. And then you close your eyes and it's the same thing. You open your eyes, it's the same thing. You're like, you don't know what's going on. And somebody says, hey, there's a light. And you're like, I don't see it, I don't see it. And somebody says, just open your eyes. Oh. And sometimes it's just a matter of opening the eyes to see that sliver of light. So why do we do it? Well, walking with our eyes open in the community enhances our awareness and informs our prayer. See, when we walk in the community and we have our eyes open, and I don't mean that just to just because you're going to stumble and fall, you know, if you, bite, you know, if you step on a, on a curb or something. I mean, have your eyes open in the community. It's going to inform how you pray. All right, so what's really going on? So what's really happening when we pray? What, what's, what's, is it it's just, you know, crazy people talking out loud and, you know, walking around the community? What's, what's, What's actually happening? What's the reality? Well, the reality, friends, is that when we pray, we engage in a spiritual battle. See, there's this cosmic conflict that's happening. And some of you might actually feel that cosmic conflict internally in your, in your gut, in your bosom, in your, in, your, uh, in your heart, in your core. And you feel the darkness and light battling. But we are engaged in spiritual battle. And when we pray, we actually engage in that. We're part of that. Now let me tell you a secret that's not so secret. And that the enemy does not want us to pray. And the enemy does not only not want us to pray, but the enemy does not want us to engage our community. It doesn't want us to see our community. And you know what it does? He does at least three things. The first, he's going to try to isolate. He's going to try to put you away, isolate you. And, and, and the isolation might come like, oh, I'm too tired. I don't feel like going to brunch on Sunday. I'm too tired. Or the isolation might be like, oh, man, I can't really connect with anybody there. And this isolation might come from all sorts of things in your mind that the devil is putting in there and say, no, 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 don't go there. They don't want you anyway. Why go there? I mean, who are you going to hang around with? You're going to be by a table, at a table all by yourself. See, the devil comes to that and he tries to isolate. He tries to isolate Christians. Did you know that when a lion and a, and a lion uh, herd, herd, whatever, lion group, lion Pride uh, attacks uh, 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 the, the little antelopes and all that kind of stuff. You know what they try to do? They try to isolate the weakest. So if you're going through some tough times right now, if you're going through some things that are not quite right, you might feel a little weak. And the lions are trying to isolate you. Why? You're easier to catch. You're easier to spiral down. And spiral down. And our Lord says, no, 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 no. I put you in a place. I put you among crazy people like this. Yeah, you're all crazy. You don't know that, right? Yeah. You do? Your pastor's crazy? Yeah. All right, so listen. God put you in a place like this. And I often refer to this place as, as sort of like the island of misfit toys. Because I are one. I, I'm redeemed by the same grace you've been redeemed by. I've dealt with demons just like you. I've dealt with challenges just like you. Isolation. The second thing is intimidation. Do you realize that the enemy wants to intimidate you? So you walk on your prayer walks, you go on, on your prayer walks, and, and, the, and the devil comes with these words like, oh, you know, don't go out there. 
to realize that you know it might, it might even be illegal to be out there. You're gonna get in trouble. Don't do that. And friends, if we think here in the states we got trouble because of our faith, we're kidding ourselves. I happen to know that growing up, there are people that are experiencing real trouble. Real trouble. And just a few miles away, when I say a few miles away, it's a few in comparison to the gigantic nature of the universe. Just a few miles away, on the other side of the world, there's Christians that are being in trouble right now because of their faith. So friends, the devil wants to intimidate you. And, and, and not only isolate you, but try to intimidate you. It's like, hey, you, you Christian, you keep quiet. You're going to offend somebody. You keep quiet. Stop talking about this love of God thing. And then the other thing that the devil tries to do, my friends, is indifference. It's trying to put in our, in our mind, in our heart, this kind of a indifference. You know what? I got my own problems. Why do I have to worry about you? Y'all, listen. I got plenty of troubles on my own. Why do I have to worry about you? And the devil comes like that to you as well. And it says, you know what? You got plenty to carry. You need some me time. That's probably the biggest lie that the devil is using right now. You need some me time. But what's me time? Usually in front of a screen, binge watching who knows what. Or on your social media. That's me time? Did you realize that me time is actually spiraling you down even more? Did you realize that me time is probably more like this? It's probably picking up a good book. Maybe the good book. Me time is not put your nose on the front of a screen. That sucks the life out of you people. It sucks the life out of me. Me time is you and the Lord, you and Jesus. This ain't no Jesus. It's a tool. Friends, the devil wants to isolate you. The devil wants to intimidate you. And the devil wants you to not give up a, a, a care. He wants you to be indifferent. That's what's really happening when we go on prayer walks. That's what's really happening when we take the time to go out into the community. We consciously come before God and engage in His rescue mission. I got rescued. Some of you got rescued. Some of you are being in the process of being rescued. Praise God. See, as I said earlier, he's the one that comes to the darkness and brings the SWAT team and says, I will rescue you because you're captive. May we have more SWAT teams like that. We, what's, what's happening? We call upon the Holy Spirit to bring light into the shadows of our communities. There's plenty of shadows. And, and, and when we pray a while, we say, Lord, bring light. Bring light into this house. Bring light into this corner. Help me be that light. We are ambassadors of Christ. We are the light. And by the fact that when we go out and prayer walk, we bring light. We bring hope in our community. I don't want us to go out in the community and, and, and be these... You know, we're not there to bash. We're there to rescue. We're there to rescue. Let's go after that. We are His ambassadors. So what are the logistics? How do we practically do it? What, what do we do when we do these prayer walks? By the way, all these prayer walks, that I'm, I'm asking all the small groups to engage in them. Even the Tuesday night group. Engage in these prayer walks. What do we do? Well, prayer walking, here it is. Prayer walking can be done as an individual or as a group. Practically speaking, two or three is, is ideal. Okay, you have four, it's not, not a problem. 
but two or three, two to four people the most. Because imagine if you have like 15 people in your group and you're all walking in the community, somebody's gonna call the cops on you. You know that, right? Right? So so break up into into two or three, three or four the most. Um, maps. Yes, maps, GPS, those are important. People don't get lost, especially in subdivision. Logistics, planning, be smart. Plot a walking course, figure out what's, uh, uh, where you're going to walk, how you're going to walk. But you know what? While you're doing that, it's okay to be open to the Holy Spirit. Because he might say, you know what, on your walk, you're planning to make a left, and the Holy Spirit might say, you know what, <clears throat> take a right, don't go left. So be open to the Holy Spirit. Uh, as I said, be smart, consider safety. Yes, safety is important. Be sensitive. Don't walk around being loud. Yes, you pray out loud, but don't be loud and obnoxious. Pray out loud. Pray perhaps <clears throat> loud enough for your group to hear, but not necessarily loud enough for the whole community to see you raising your hands, falling on your knees. No, that's probably not going to be helpful to you. There's a place and time for that, but not as a spectacle. Um, pray with that, your eyes open. And you remember what I said about that. It's pray for people. Pray for individuals. Pray by name if you know them. Pray for the places. Pray for the schools. Name the school. Pewaukee High School. Pray for the businesses. Brewers to coffee shop. Pray for those in our community. Pray for the businesses. Pray for the for the for the buildings, for the subdivisions. Pray with your eyes open. Here's this one. I love this one because your prayer has got to be for something and against something. Prayers got to be for something or prayers can be against something. You pray for the light. It's okay to pray for the light. But it's also okay to pray against the darkness. Every time I walk by this place right here uh, down the street, I say, Lord, bind evil. Bind the demon forces. Bind evil. Why? Because we need to bind those. We are in conflict with, with the powers and principalities, not with people. We ought to rescue people. Be specific. Use name, locations, organization. Okay, so what do you do? Before you set out, you've got to have your, your plan. You've got to figure out, uh, for, actually, before you set out, first of all, pray as a group. Before you set out, get together as a group and ask the Lord to open your eyes. Simple, first step. Second step, split, figure out what your groups of three is or groups of four. Four, agree on a start and end location and time. I mean, you can do a four-hour prayer walk, but perhaps your prayer walk might only be half an hour. And you know what? That's okay. A 20-minute prayer walk is just fine. So agree on your end and start time. Have a working cell phone in each group. Yeah, that's important. <laughs> Maybe create a group text so the groups stay together in terms of, hey, where are you guys? Stay informed. Make a list of topics you'll pray through. What are you going to pray through? What are, your top, what are your top three things you're going to pray for? Have a list. Um, have a list of Bible verses or passages that could augment your prayer. Go to the Psalms. Oh, bring your Bible app. Open it up to Psalms. Um, bring a Bible. If you don't have a prayer app or Bible app. And here's the other thing. Carry a life book with you or, or one of those you're invited cards. Not to be pushy or obnoxious, but you never know. Have it in your back pocket. You know, it's, it's one of these things. I think I, I saw it here. Oh, yeah, here it is. Have one of these with you. Put it in your back pocket. If the time comes and it's appropriate, share it. But no, we're not going to be pushy. And same thing with this. You're invited. That's okay. Just put it in your backpack. And if the Lord opens the door, fine. Hey, you know what?
just check it, check us out. There's a website here. You can see some more stuff. You know, check us, check out our church. That's okay. And and by the way, what this is? This is the Gospel of John. And then there's another one that's gray, and that's the Gospel of Mark. It's just the simple words of Christ. Here it is. By the way, if you don't have one of these, take one with you. We'll probably Tom will probably mm -hmm. grab or Marlene. We'll grab some, bring them over here. People can take, bring both kinds. So friends, prayer walking. Prayer walking is as should be as natural as walking. It should be as simple as just going around and seeing and observing and praying. You all realize that sometimes while I speak, the Lord puts it on my heart, a prayer. And it's almost like it's this silent prayer that happens. And as I look at you, as I look in your eyes, I think, Lord, bless them. Speak to their heart. <coughs> it's the same. It doesn't have to be scary. It doesn't have to be a big deal. It doesn't have to be long. Decide for your group. Decide for yourself. By the way, somebody, I was like, was it? Yeah, Andy, I was talking to Andy uh, this morning about, well, you know, on, on sub-degree, minus 20 below, and all that kind of stuff, what are you going to do? All right, fine, do it. Prayer cruise, you know, get in your car, pray around. If you don't feel comfortable driving, it's okay, too. You know what? Grab a map and pray. See, look, I'm praying for this subdivision right here. What's it called? It's called this. And you're praying for that subdivision. Make a list of your friends and neighbors. And you say, Lord, now I'm praying for my next door neighbor. Or your roommate. Or the person who doesn't like you. Or the person that bugs you. Or the person that's not nice to you. That's as simple as that. Prayer walking can be kinetic. But if you can't walk for a long time, don't let that stop you. There's options. There's options. Well, friends, that was what I wanted to share with you today. Do not let yourself be isolated. Encourage others that are isolating themselves not to do so. Don't let yourself be intimidated. Stay the course. Be humble, but stay the course. And in no way let yourself be apathetic. We have a mission to do. We gotta care for others. We gotta care for others. Let me pray with you. Father God, I thank you this morning that your Holy Spirit continues to work in our hearts and minds. I pray for those that were not able to make it today. I pray for their hearts and minds. Lord, protect them, bring them back to you. I pray for every person here and the, the family that's being represented here. Holy Spirit, continue to transform us and draw us closer to you. And thank you for your patience with us and our humanity when we fall and stumble and when we do stupid things. May we approach you with humility and may we approach you with boldness, with courage. I pray this in Christ's name. Amen.